I've been using gongs on the road since 1970. And when they first made gongs, they made them in two halves. So they joined them down the middle. Crazy when you think about it, where do you hit it? At its weakest point if the join's in the middle. So anyway, one day I was whacking the gong. They were like this kind of brown, sort of Tibetan type things like normal gong. Whacking this gong and it cracked. I didn't know it had cracked. So the road crew, the following day, because we were touring England, took the gong to a garage and asked them to weld it. <laughs> so they did. I, they didn't tell me because they thought it'd be okay. Of course, the minute I hit it again, the well just dropped out and it sounded like it had five toilet chains and <laughs> jang jangling on the back of it, you know. So I got hold of Paiste, which is a Swiss company from Estonia originally, but they're based in Switzerland, so manufacturing in a town called Notville. I said to them, here's my idea. How about one solid piece and two end sections? What for, Carl? The gone. Well, we've never had any complaints before. I said, yeah, because orchestras use them. They go, boom, mm. you know. I said, I'll, I'll hit them. You know, I hit them hard. So they said, oh, we try it. So they made a, they started to make gongs, solid section, two uh, end pieces. Two years ago at the trade fair at NAM here, and then in Frankfurt, they came out with the crime gong after all those years. And that's the story, really. And I said, I'll have two. And I'll have another two for Europe. So I've got four crime gongs.